Well, hey there, it's Saturn from space. Do you want to learn how to process a picture of me? Well, listen to my friend here and he'll show you how to do it in PIP, AutoStacker, and Registax. I hope you look up at me. Thanks, Saturn. Hey, it's Nas from Astronomy. In today's video, I'll show you how to process a picture of Saturn. Not quite like the one you just saw, that was a 15 minute exposure. We'll work on a 61 second exposure of Saturn and we will process that through PIP, AutoStacker, and Registax. I will provide the video file, so look for that link in the description below so you can follow along if you don't have your own data. So let's jump into PIP. So these are all the images and video files that I captured last night of Jupiter and Saturn. Um, I kind of picked out a couple of these that are looks really good. So this one is about a minute, so we'll use this one in our processing software. So the first one we're going to use is called PIP, which is Planetary Imaging Pre-Processing. Just bring it over here, and it gives you a little uh, preview window here. You can expand it to 100%, so this is what it looks like. This is what one of the frames look like. So I'll go back down to 25. Over here, you want to make sure that it's optimized for planetary. And then let's go to the input options. Um, you want to make sure that DBA raw image files is checked. It should be checked by default. And then we'll leave everything else alone. In the processing options, uh, make sure that object planetary is set for the stabilization mode. Make sure convert color to monochrome is turned off, otherwise you'll get a black and white picture. You can do enable cropping if you want. Uh, you can also turn it off. Uh, it's a 1920 by 1088, so I'll just do a 1000 by 1000, just for fun. See what it looks like. We'll skip quality options, animations options, and the output settings I'm selecting AVI so that I get a little movie file. Go to do processing and click on start processing. It'll go through each of these frames and center Saturn. So we'll come back once this is completed. Right, so that took 38 seconds, pretty fast. And if I look here in my directory, there's a new folder open at 1059, so it's 11 o'clock. So this is the newest one. If I go into this, we'll see that there is a an AVI file. Click on it, and you'll see that it is playing Saturn right in the center here, and it is not bouncing around. And it has about, let's say, about a full minute and one second of the video. Next, we'll open this in Auto Stackert. So again, click and drag here, and what this will do is. Oops, that's a weird one, so we'll clear those. So what I have selected here is for planet. Um, keep it local for now, and then we'll click on analyze, so it analyzes each of the frames. Uh, while it analyzes, I'll tell you about the frame percentages to stack. Normally, you'd you don't want to stack 100% because there, should, there would be a bunch of um, images that look not great. So I'll decrease this size. So I do the best 30%. A lot of people like doing 20%. I'll, I'll do between, or like 25%. I'll do between 20 and uh, 30%, depending on how many frames I have. So I think 30% for this is good. And in the quality graph, you can see exactly where all the frames last. Some are really good, like around here, and some are below 50%. You don't want to use those. So when I do 30%, it'll use everything in, the, in this block here and a little bit from the second block here. So once this is done, um, we'll come back to, we'll come, go to this window. We'll click on 24. Minimum brightness, you can do 100 if you have like the moon or something, I'm doing 50%. Click on place AP grid. So it clicked, placed 54 alignment points on Saturn so that it knows what to align. If you want less, just switch it up, move up the brightness. So I'll do this and it's 31. You could also use this slider here to go through the different frames. So you can analyze different frames, click on AP, and that one has 25. So let's go back to the first frame since that seems to be the best one. Okay. And everything else you can leave alone. Now we'll go back to the original screen. I click, I usually click on sharpened images, save sharpened images because it gives me a second uh, preview TIFF file that I can use to kind of use as a guide uh, and see what I have. We'll do RGB align and save in folders and then we'll click on stack. 
So that took uh, about 30 seconds or so to get to 100% and it opened a or created a new directory called ASP30. So it has two TIFF files. So if I open this one, so this is the first TIFF file. Looks looks pretty nice, right? It's uh, pretty big in the in the field of view here. Let's go to the next one. So this is a sharpened image. Uh, and you can see more of the bands. You can you can make out the Cassini division here. It's just a little bit sharper. But when we process it in Registax, we will use this one. So open up Registax. Here it is. I wish I could do everything in auto stackered, but unfortunately Registax does not, or sorry, auto stacker doesn't do wavelet manipulation for some reason. So have to st have to go to Registax at one point. So we're gonna look on the right side here first. We'll do a quick RGB align on the planet so you can expand the square here and then do estimate. And it is processing here on the bottom left. It processed it and it's, say, it's saying that my RGB is perfectly aligned. Uh, it could be because of my usage of the atmospheric dispersion corrector because I've never had this. It always usually aligns one thing or another, one direction or another, but that's great. We'll open up histogram to see where all the data is. The data is like, I think like around here. Uh, so we can move the slider a little bit here, to like 14. So this is the white slider. And this is oh, sorry, that's the black slider. And this is the white slider. So all the data kind of starts here. So this is 203. Click on stretch. Looks pretty nice. We can go a little bit more to 20. Script. And then you can you can play around with this. And we'll close this, and the next thing we're going to look at is the wavelet filter. So you can do a, a dyadic um, two to the n power or linear. I think I have an easier time when I use linear. Uh, dyadic is a little little bit harder for me to do at least. So let's do the different layers of wavelets. Um, I, I like starting off very high on one and you can see it looks better so you can check and uncheck to see the differences you can see it looks a lot sharper so we can up the denoise makes it a little bit smoother and then we can sharpen it a little bit and then click it on and off to see the difference next thing we'll do is wavelet 2 on and off to see the difference okay let's up the denoise a little bit Sharpen it a tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for three, and then I'll skip the rest of them. The, oh, I'll skip the rest of them going over this video because they're pretty much the same. It gets the scale just gets smaller and smaller the higher you go. Okay, I went and did some minor adjustments to the other wavelets, and this is what it looks like if you want to copy it. I'm um, gonna go back down a little bit with wavelet one, but you can s clearly make out the bands on the atmosphere of Saturn. You can clearly see the Cassini division in the rings of Saturn, and it looks really good, I think. We can also go back to RGB balance on this side. We'll do an auto rebalance, and it lowered the red a tiny bit and then increased the blue a tiny bit so that it looks a little, little bit better. Let's do that. And the next thing we want to do, the thing I usually do is uh, I decrease the contrast a little bit so that planet looks not washed out. I like doing like 85%. So this is 82%. If you reset it, you'll see it looks pretty bright. It looks a little bit washed out. So 85 brings it down just enough. Just enough. And I think it looks really good. I did another RGB balance to see what it looks like. So it like it like sets it back and forth and you can see which one looks better. So this one looks makes it look more blue. This one makes it look more orangey ready. And I think this is better a better version of the planet here in my opinion. So I think this is the one I'll keep. And once this is done, I'll click on save image. Oh yeah, let's do the functions. So it'll do all of this and save it. 
Let's close this. Okay, now I have this. So it wants to save it as a TIFF file, so I can do Saturn save. If we go back to the directory, and now there's the Saturn.tiff file here. So this is what it looks like. I think this is a really good shot. This is my best shot of Saturn that I've captured so far. So I know I just said that this shot of Saturn was my best so far. So I did this process before I stacked my 15 minutes. So after I did my 15 minutes of video, this turned out to be my second best so far. And I hope this video was helpful in taking you through stacking not just Saturn, but any planet through PIP, AutoStacker, and Registax. My next target is Jupiter at opposition on September 26, 2022. So subscribe and come back and we'll go over this process again with Jupiter. The one thing to know about Jupiter is that Jupiter rotates very fast. It's the fastest spinning planet in our solar system. So I won't be able to stack a 15 minute video like I did in this video. We'll have to do some kind of derotation if I want to use that much data. Otherwise I can stick to maybe five or six minutes before rotation starts to show on Jupiter uh, and Pip and Auto Stacker can't stack those anymore. But we'll deal with that with Jupiter. So come back and we'll see what we get. So I hope to see you on September 26th. Until then, clear skies. Oh, oh.